Hey everybody, Chris Leipert here at the 2019 Psychotherapy Networker Symposium. Thanks again for joining us for uh, yet another one of our Facebook Live videos. I'm here with Margie Nichols. Margie is the founder and first director of IPG, the Institute for Personal Growth. She also has a private practice, I should say several private practices, uh, in Jersey City, Highland Park, and Freehold in New Jersey. Uh, she's also the author of the upcoming book, uh, Gender Expansive Kids, Polyamorous Couples, and Mostly Heterosexual Men. Margie, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for inviting me. This will be fun. Our pleasure. Um, so our first question is, uh, what's new in your line of work? You, of course, work with LGB, the LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. What's new in uh, this realm that you are most excited about? Okay. So what I'm most excited about, I think, is that the community itself has become a big tent community. It's become very expansive. Mm -hmm. This is really what my the book I'm writing is about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, much more sex and gender diverse, and I'm excited about what that's teaching everybody else about sex and gender. Mm -hmm. For example, out of the transgender community came this whole concept that gender is not binary. And mm -hmm. so we now have, are starting to see gender on a continuum and the people who identify as non-binary are kind of the representative of that breaking apart of the, of, of the gender binary. Mm. Um, in the realm of sexual orientation, for example, Rich Savin Williams is doing work on mostly heterosexual men, mm. in which he finds that if you allow people more categories than three, that lots of people choose mostly heterosexual, 9% of men, so if you, instead of saying, are you lesbian, are you gay, uh, bisexual, or straight, if you say, are you entirely heterosexual, mostly heterosexual, bisexual, mostly gay, entirely gay, 9% of men and 20% of women choose mostly heterosexual. Mm. Meaning, there's a lot of people out there that are not entirely straight. So, mm. you know, th these are things that I don't think would have occurred to us except we're getting people who identify um, as something they identify as pansexual, not mm -hmm. bisexual, you know, asexual. Uh, lots of people are sort of parsing sexual orientation pretty and, and gender identity pretty finely, and we're learning from that. Fantastic. And it's exciting. Great, great. Now, if somebody's interested in getting into this line of work, let's say I'm an aspiring therapist in grad school, um, what do I really need to know about when I'm entering this field? Um, you need to know that things change at warp speed, mm. right? So I started in the early 80s, um, uh, about 10 years after homosexuality had been removed from the DSM. The big issue when I started was everybody felt ashamed of being gay. Nobody came out until they were older, mm. and everybody felt ashamed of being gay. Fast forward to, to today, I'm not saying there aren't, st you know, there's still shame and stigma sure. and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. but that's not the typical issue that a younger um, non-heterosexual person is dealing with, mm -hmm. you know, um, and their people are coming out at younger and younger ages. Mm -hmm. So th th things change so quickly in this field, you've got to get plugged in to not only know what's the most current thing, but it, you're going to have to re-up your knowledge every year. Um, with training and continuing ed and, mm -hmm. and ho hopefully exposure and experience. Great. Well, Margie, thank you so much for joining us. We really thank you appreciate for having it. me here. To everybody out there, please join us at 4 p.m. We'll be doing another Facebook Live video. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon.